Bugs Bunny Birthday Blowout was released by Chemco for the NES in 1990. As the title suggests, the game celebrates the anniversary of the Bugs Bunny character, who had just turned 50. This birthday was incorporated into the game's plot, where Bugs receives an invitation for a party in his honor, but all his Looney Tunes friends are pissed that they weren't invited. They're so pissed, in fact, that they decide to form a mob and try to blockade him from reaching his own party. I guess if they can't go, Bugs can't go either. It's a side-scrolling platformer where you traverse through six total stages with four levels in each, called rounds, so there are really 24 levels altogether. You get some weird-ass enemies like fireballs, ghosts, and evil soapboxes, which you can take out with a mallet. This is a cartoon, after all. You can also use this mallet to dig through rocks and other breakable surfaces to retrieve items or clear a path to an unreachable area, as well as springing yourself up on a seesaw for a higher jump. Other than that, there are no special weapons, and there's not a lot in the way of items or power-ups either. The game implores a keep-it-simple stupid approach. As far as items go, the main one is carrots, which you can essentially use as coins in the game's bingo bonus round at the end of most of the rounds. For every 10 carrots you have, you get a turn at drawing numbers trying to form a line of 3 or more to get extra lives. It's very similar to Super Mario Bros. 2's bonus game where you have control over the randomization, only it's bingo rather than slot machine. After the last round of each stage, you'll play a whack-a-mole style bonus game instead, also for extra lives. The other thing that the carrots do, once you collect one, is the square where the carrot used to be becomes a platform. So you can basically form these platforms to get to unreachable areas, hop across pits, or head for higher ground. You can pass through them too, they won't get in your way, so creating these platforms is never one of those things that becomes an accidental detriment. Then there are the hearts. The ones you find in these boxes will fill your health completely, while the ones that are dropped by enemies will fill a hit point, and you get 12 altogether. So while it's not a good idea to be totally reckless, the game is generous with how many hits you can take as well as the amount of hearts you'll be able to pick up. Insta-deaths like pits are the biggest problem you'll have to worry about. Then there's the jump enhancement. If you grab this icon, you'll be able to jump even higher than normal. And there's the mallet icon, which makes you swing faster. So like I said, there are four rounds per stage, and every other round you'll either get a boss battle with one of your jealous friends that you need to take out, or a kinda sorta boss battle with Daffy Duck, where he wanders back and forth and you just need to get by him and grab the giant carrot to advance. The actual boss battles aren't very imaginative either. Their attack patterns are rudimentary when they're at their most complicated. Sometimes they just wander back and forth much like Daffy. So yeah, there definitely could have been more put into this. The stages are linear for the most part, but there are rabbit holes here and there that you can take to enter another section, which could be a small room with some carrots, or possibly a shortcut through the stage when you come out on the other side. The levels are fairly short, and they're pretty easy for the most part but this was targeting the younger audience, even by video game standards at the time. Although it wasn't a complete cakewalk. There are no checkpoints, even if you die in the boss battle, you go back to the beginning of the level. The controls are mostly responsive, but there is a delay with the mallet swing, and the rapid rate is pretty low. I know that it's realistic to have a slow swing when slamming down on a massive mallet, but this is a cartoon. Realism goes out the window in a world where the rules of physics cease to exist. And yeah, there is that mallet enhancer that makes the swing faster, but there aren't a lot of them in the game. You'll be dealing with the shitty swing for the vast majority. Also, the controls are a bit stiff with jumping, although you do get a lot of height, which is fitting since you're a rabbit. It's not too bad, but positioning yourself on small platforms might be more of a problem than it should be, for example. But once you get acclimated to the controls, you're pretty much golden. The graphics are decent, but the characters are very well defined and recognizable. And they look great in the cutscenes, although you only get these in the beginning and the end of the whole game. There may not be a whole lot of substance in Birthday Blowout, and it's a bit on the easy side, but if you're in the mood for a simple, forgiving game to just plug and play and steadily coast through, 
You can't go wrong with Birthday Blowout. So the game starts out with a cutscene explaining the plot. Bugs getting an invitation to his party, and all his friends go apeshit and decide to prevent him from getting there. You'll meet this little guy with a mallet for a head. He just wanders around slowly and jumps. Smash his ass, move on, and grab the carrots. You'll also meet the soapbox. He stays on the ground and sends a floating bubble at you. Kill him before he does. Then there are these floating flames that'll always leave a heart behind after you kill them. So try to take these guys out whenever you can, unless you're at full health. Climb the ladder here, and it'll lead you to a jump enhancer. Then you'll want to use your mallet to crush these rocks and get some more carrots, and then be careful on these rocks as you grab the heart, because they'll break underneath you. So jump away quickly. Then use the mallet to spring yourself up the seesaw for a carrot up here, and the passage at the end is just ahead. Just watch out for the rock that pops out of it intermittently for some reason. After entering, you'll have your first Daffy encounter. Like I said before, all he does is walk back and forth, so once there's room, grab the carrots to create the platforms, and grab the giant carrot that ends the round. In round two, you'll meet these machines that send projectiles that will sail over you, but then drop down. So get close to them and wipe them out. Then there are these alarm clocks that detonate once you get close. Lure them into explosion and retreat before it does any damage. Then there are these jumping centipedes that switch colors. When they're red, they'll hurt you upon contact, and when they're green or blue later on, then you can pass right through them. So time it right and move quickly. You can't kill them. Then you'll come to a series of three passages. The first one leads to a small area where you'll get some more carrots and then pop back out of the third passage in the lineup. The center passage takes you to another that has a jump enhancer. Just watch out for the rocks that pop out on your way back over, and this one takes you to an area just ahead in the level. Watch the centipedes as you grab the carrots on your way across, and be careful on these narrow platforms. You don't want to drop into the pit below, and the passage to the mini boss is just ahead. You'll face off with Tweety Bird, who hides behind the bush like a little bitch, and then pops out to launch a surprise attack before hiding again. Get close to lure him out, and pop him in the head. Be ready cause he's quick. In round 3, use the platforms above the centipedes to avoid them, and then avoid the falling rocks as you traverse these moving platforms. Shortly after, take this moving platform to get up here, and there is a passage that acts as a shortcut. You can pass over it to get to the jump enhancer, or just use the shortcut if you don't feel like dealing with all these spikes and disappearing platforms you need to maneuver between. Use the platform to get the heart up here, and then head for higher ground in the home stretch so you don't have to maneuver through the centipedes, and the passage to Daffy is just ahead. Use the platform to get the carrots, and then grab the big one. In the last round of the stage, go into the passage you see right away. It'll take you to a small room with some carrots, and the next one will take you to another one. Drop down here for a mallet enhancer, and you can't get to the other side, so spring your way back to where you came. These Tetris block platforms disappear after you land on them, so jump quickly and take the next passage down. Watch the falling rocks as you hop across the collapsing rocks and disappearing platforms, and take this passage that'll lead you to some carrots, and then the next one brings you to the other side of the room you couldn't access before. Grab the heart, and then head back. This platform will drop you down, head across to grab the carrots, and then climb up to the passage to the boss. While E. Coyote is hungry for Rabbit instead of Roadrunner today. He jumps around and tries to stab you. Time it so you smash him right as he lands, and you're done with the round and the stage. On to World 2, which is in the desert. Borrowing from Super Mario much? As soon as you jump across this pit, the ground starts collapsing, so book that shit. Carefully time your movements through all the centipedes here, and jump over the quicksand. If you do get caught, you'll have to button mash. Use the moving platform here to get up onto the green blocks, which make things way easier to get across this quicksand. Jump over the rolling tumbleweed, 
and the passage to Daffy is just ahead. Slip by him and spring your way up to the big carrot. At the beginning of round two, an earthquake will commence, which shakes the screen, but otherwise does nothing but try to disorient you, so just move on. These tornadoes will come whirling from the side. Step aside and let them pass you. Use these moving platforms to get up here and enter this passage for a small carrot room. Then head up here for a jump enhancer and slip carefully through here for a passage that leads to an area with another earthquake, which can be a problem if you let the illusion of instability mess with you. Grab the heart, wait for the projectiles to stop firing and swoop in to kill this prick and then break through the sphinxes to get the carrots underneath. Spring your way up here and the passage to the mini boss is just ahead. It's another battle with Tweety Bird, same shit as before. Lure him out and smash his annoying ass into the ground. On to round three. Spring your way up here to get a heart and then stay on the higher ground to get up and slip down for another heart. Dig through the sphinx for some more carrots and then head up here for a passage to a carrot room. Continuing on, head up here for a jump enhancer, and then carefully land in the tiny safe zones between the machinery. And head up via the disappearing platforms to get over all that bullshit down there, and the passage to Daffy is just ahead. Actually, Daffy doesn't show up here. You just have to break these rocks to get to the big carrot, and you're all done. Fourth and final round of the stage. Take the disappearing platforms to get over the robot machine thingies, and then slip down into this drop to get some extra carrots and a heart. Just take short jumps so you don't smash your head and fall into the pit. The passage at the end will take you right where you were when you went into the shop. Slip in here to get to a passage, dig through more sphinxes, and you'll soon take another passage. Take out the breakable blocks for a heart, and then ride the moving platform up here to the disappearing platforms to get over the centipedes. And you'll take a passage that'll take you to the sky. If you fall, you'll end up back before you took the first passage and you'll have to go back through most of the level all over again. To maintain your footing on the moving platform, grab the heart and take the passage to the boss battle with Yosemite Sam. This pattern is similar to Wile E. Coyote, He'll walk around and jump here and there, but instead of stabbing, he fires a few gunshots. Jump over the bullets and try to get a direct hit up close to take him out. Stage 3 takes place on a volcano. Early on, you'll meet these frogs that'll hop around pretty quickly. Take them out as soon as you can, or escape if you can. Use the carrot platforms to get onto the disappearing platform to get over the lava. For the majority of the round, you'll want to head for higher ground. There's more carrots up there, and you don't have as much bullshit to worry about as you will on the ground. So just watch for the rocks that fall out of the sky. When you get to this barrel, head inside for some bonus carrots. After that, there'll be flames that shoot up from the pits. All the more reason to be up higher. Wait for the openings before moving on. At the home stretch, the ground will do that disappearing act. So run quickly, or use the platforms up top to bypass this shit. Shortly after that is the platform that'll take you to the Daffy encounter. Just scale the platforms and grab the big carrot. In round two, you'll come across this thing called the Spring Loaded Weight, which wipes out all on-screen enemies when you smash it. There's a drop where you can bang a left and grab some carrots. Just make sure you don't fall into the lava pits. The barrel at the end will bring you up ahead in the level, a little bit beyond the drop that you initially took. Take the barrel right after that to the next segment, and avoid the flame balls that the volcanoes in the background fire out. Stay between them. At the far wall, there's another barrel. It'll take you directly above, where you have to run across the breakable rocks. If you fall, you'll be backtracked and have to go back through the barrel again. The barrel at the end of this run will lead you to the mini boss battle. This time it's not Tweety, it's Elmer Fudd. He just wanders back and forth and fires a shot once in a while. Get a running jump and hammer his ass into the ground to end the round. Round three is very straightforward. There are no passage barrels until the last one at the end, and there aren't any new enemies or anything. But there are a lot of lava pits, falling rocks, and breakable platforms. So just be careful and don't let this floating platform take you down into the lava. Time your jump here for when the centipedes turn blue, follow the linear path, 
and you'll reach the barrel for an easy Daffy encounter, even by Daffy encounter standards. Just slip down. Round 4 starts out with a bunch of pits with the flames that fire out from the ground. Wait for the opening and then move on. Once again, the higher ground is the best for reaction time and avoidance of pits. You'll enter a barrel, and when you emerge, take the moving platforms here upward. It'll be easier to get over all these lava pits. Just move quickly because you've got breakable rocks and disappearing platforms to move on. You'll find that these rocks can break through beneath your feet, but before you do that, continue on and enter the barrel here for a small bonus carrot room. Then go back and break through the ground, head left, and watch the flames that shoot out from the pit on your way to the next barrel. Another short trip with flames and volcano flame balls, and you'll reach the last barrel, where you'll meet Sylvester and Sylvester Jr. Jr. will just skateboard back and forth. Jump behind him in turn to slam the mallet down on him, and then Sylvester Stallone will take his place. It's the same ship, just a bigger cat. After wiping him out, you're done with the stage, and it's on to stage 4. Stage 4 takes place in a cave. Watch the waterfalls that intermittently come and go, wait for the opening before passing, and do the same for the falling spikes from the ceiling. Breaking through the floor here will lead you to a carrot and a pipe that takes you directly to the floor above. Watch out for the spikes on your way across the floating platforms, time it so you slip between them, and grab the heart right after. Don't bother with these springs, because they'll actually summon the enemies as they fall from the ceiling. Just move on instead, and the pipe to Daffy is just ahead. Pop up top for the big carrot. At the beginning of round two, you'll meet the ghosts that just float around. But you can't kill what's already dead, so all you can do is avoid them. Don't touch these oil drums, they won't move, but they'll hurt you upon contact. And they'll emit a gas or some shit that puts the lights out for some reason but it's temporary, so you can wait this out if you have to, and head up here for the pipe. When you get here, use the spout as a pseudo-platform up, and then drop into this nook for some extra carrots. Spring your way up for some more carrots, break through the floor to get down, and then take the spout up, and the pipe to the Tweety mini-bosses just ahead. Same shit as before, knock him out and grab the gigantic carrot. In round three, you'll start in this tight space. Grab the carrots, watch out for the spikes and ghosts, and head down the pipe. Grab the heart, and spring your way up here when the water isn't falling and the platform is in range. Then you've got another tight passageway with spikes and ghosts, etc. on your way to the next pipe. Make sure you know where these pits are when the place goes dark, or just wait a second for the light to come back on before jumping and the pipe to the Daffy encounter is just ahead. Use the rabbit season sign to give you a boost to the carrot. At the beginning of round four, you'll come across a bridge that falls apart when you walk on it, so don't linger here. You'll run into another one with some falling spikes a little later, after dealing with some more ghosts, falling spikes, and rolling rocks. You can use these spouts to get carrots up here, but you'll be dealing with the falling spikes, so you're better served to just move on. Up ahead is a long pit with moving platforms. Dodge the falling spikes and ghosts as much as you can. If you have to take a hit or two, fine, just don't fall. Grab the heart right before the pipe and you'll do battle with Pepe Le Pew. He'll turn around and fart in your face and walk around slowly. The fart clouds will hang around and you can actually smash them away with the mallet. So clear yourself a path and bash this rapist's face in and you're done with the stage. Stage 5 takes place in the forest. Use the tree trunks as ladders to climb up and grab carrots, and if you want to advance beyond shit down below that you don't want to deal with. Wait for these centipedes to turn green before moving on, and climb up here for a heart. Wait for the vine to swing over in your direction before going after it since you'll need to use a disappearing platform, and then do the same when the next vine gets closer to you. Keep an eye on these trash cans, they'll open up and send alarm clocks after you. After some more vines, centipedes, and frogs, you'll reach the passageway to Daffy. Hop over him and use the platforms to get to the big carrot. Most of round two is taken up by two large pits, and you'll need to utilize these platforms to get across. Wait for the centipede to turn green, and then utilize the carrots to act as platforms and get you up higher. 
you'll get to a disappearing platform. Use it to get to this mallet, but these blocks underneath collapse, although you might want to drop right here to get the har on top of this tree. After a couple more centipedes, you'll want to scale up the disappearing platforms to get some extra carrots. And the passage up ahead leads to a small room with a few more carrots, along with a pair of centipedes on the bottom and the spider that hangs down. Just run past them, and the next passage leads to an Elmer Fudd mini-boss. Been there, done that, but do it again, and it's on to round three. You'll come across one of these vine-to-vine -vine transfers early on, but there's a disappearing platform in between, so you'll want to time this so that you can quickly jump from vine to platform to vine, jump continuously on the disappearing platform if need be. Climb this tree and grab the mallet, and then you've got three vines in a row across this water pit. Quickly hop across these breakable blocks, grab the har in this tree, and take the magical transfer platform to the next segment. It's pretty short, just bear in mind that these blocks crumble underneath your feet, so be quick. And this platform will take you to the Daffy thing, where you just have to jump over a couple sets of spikes, and then you can just bypass Daffy altogether and grab the big carrot. Or jump over him and take some bonus carrots on the side here fourth and final round of the stage, and the beginning is Frog Central. Smash these little fucks as you head up, and you have the option to take this transportation platform up to the small bonus car area. And the next platform takes you basically right back to where you were. This long stretch starts collapsing, so be fleet of foot, and head up onto this moving platform that'll lead to a series of these disappearing platforms that take you right to a falling platform that brings you to the passage to the boss. Now if at any point you drop down the crumbling blocks or where the platforms are, you'll survive. You'll just be in an alternate path with alarm clocks, centipedes, mallet heads, frogs, and trash cans. And whether you take this route or not, right before the end is a tree that you can climb for a heart. The boss is Foghorn Leghorn, along with Egghead Jr. way up here, and he'll just wander back and forth up there, while Foghorn just wanders back and forth. Use him to get a boost up here and take out Egghead after a few shots. Foghorn won't be hurt no matter how many times you hit him, but once you wipe out Egghead, Foghorn packs it in and crumbles anyway. When you take them out, grab the big carrot and it's on to the final stage. You get some conveyor belts right away, and immediately you know you're going to have to deal with a lot of these throughout the rest of the game. Just bring your way up through the vase for a small bonus carrot room, and then back the way you came. Watch your footing on the conveyor belts as you pass the ghosts and falling rocks, and do the same on this long stretch of breakable blocks. There's a mini fork in the road. The top route has falling spikes, and the bottom route has falling whatever these things are. I'd suggest the bottom route only because these flames are easier to hit and you can get some hearts. At the home stretch, they throw the kitchen sink at you. There's ghosts, flames, mallet heads, and falling rocks and spikes. Watch the shit that pours from overhead and swing at everything, particularly the flames so you can replenish any hearts you might lose. Soon after is the vase to Daffy. Trigger your platforms from the carrots and head to the big carrot from here. Early on in round two, you'll come across four walkable paths. Hop up to the top one to avoid the rolling whatevers, then there'll be a line of spikes. Press the switch with your mallet to shift their angle, and then you can pass harmlessly, like there's severe tire damage spikes or something. Use the moving platform to get across, carefully maneuver across the conveyor belts, and kill the flames to get some hearts. Stay low to avoid all the falling shit, head up to get past the whatever these are, and right after is the vase to another Elmer Fudd fight. Repeat the strategy from last time, grab the big carrot as it falls, and it's on to round three. Ride the floating platform over the spikes, scale up the conveyor belts, and simply avoid the alarm clocks on your way to the vase that'll take you to another room where you head up a couple floors, and you'll see the same room two more times. Head up, and do a short jump to clear the spring. You don't want to get sent into the spikes, and head down the vase at the end. Watch the falling spikes and jump over the pits on your way to the next vase, which takes you through the second trip through this room with a minor difference in enemy placement. Then you've got a bunch of alarm clocks on conveyor belts. 
get up close to let them blow up in front of you and take the vase to the third and final visit through this room, which leads to your confrontation with Daffy. Jump over him to trigger the carrot platforms and grab the big carrot in the corner. The jump may look tricky, but you can get a lot of hang time, so don't worry about it too much. Fourth and final round in the stage, and the whole game. Like the previous round, this is a level of many rooms. Scale up all the conveyor belts and wait for the alarm clocks to blow and maneuver your way between the falling spikes before moving on. The next room is short, but you'll need to utilize the springs you avoided last time to get up to the next phase. The next room is much like the first with conveyor belts with alarm clocks on them, but the belts are much shorter. So once again, you'll want to lure them into blowing up to make the path much easier. The next face leads to a short room with some falling rocks, and the next one brings you to another room where you'll want to spring your way to the next face, but some of these blocks will quickly collapse. So take the low route first, and then switch before springing your way up, and then you'll meet up with the final boss, Taz. He'll throw shit at you, although I don't know what the fuck this is supposed to be. Lips or something? They travel slowly towards you, and you're gonna want to send them back. So just give yourself some distance and take a swing with your mallet right before it gets to you. After a few hits, you get a cutscene of Bugs arriving to his party, only to find out it was a surprise party organized by all his Looney Tune buddies who were just engaging in war with him. It turns out they were just fucking with him the whole time. So happy 50th, Bugs. There would be no sequel to this game, but there were plenty of other games starring Bugs at the time, including the first in the Crazy Castle series on the NES. But that's for another day. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.